This lesson deals with the inverse Laplace transform. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 9, starting on page 17. Given a factored rational function of the form k times s minus z1 times s minus z2 all the way through s minus z sub m divided by s minus p1 times s minus p2 all the way through s minus p sub n. If the number of poles is greater than the number of zeros, that would mean that n is greater than m, then we call f of s a proper rational function. If the denominator has no repeated roots, in other words, p sub i does not equal p sub j, in other words, p1 wouldn't equal p2, then f of s is said to have simple poles. If a proper rational function has only simple poles, then you can decompose it into what's called a partial fraction expansion. And f of s can be written as k1 over s minus p1 plus k2 over s minus p2 all the way through k sub n over s minus p sub n, where the k's associated with each term are called residues. Now using our Laplace table on page 13, we could go from the s domain to the time domain. This would correspond to k1 times e to the p1t. This would be k2 times e to the p2t all the way through k sub n times e to the p sub nt. Again, we take the opposite sign of what's here and we do the exponent of e. And then all this would be multiplied by u of t. Let's do an example to show how to find the k sub i's in the partial fraction expansion. Let's take a simple function f of s equal to k times s minus z1 divided by s minus p1 s minus p2 and s minus p3. Our property says that this is equal to some k1 over s minus p1 plus k2 over s minus p2 plus k3 over s minus p3. Now why would that be true? Let's multiply both sides of the equation by s minus p1. So here's our f of s times s minus p1. But now when you multiply this term by s minus p1, this cancels with the s minus p1 term. So I'm just left with k times s minus z1 over s minus p2 s minus p3. I'll multiply the other side of the equation by the same thing, and then the s minus p1 will cancel. I just get k1, and then these two terms have an s minus p1 multiplying it. So now set s equal to p1, and on the left-hand side of the equation, we just have p1 minus z1, p1 minus p2, p1 minus p3. Remember, this is just a number, and of course k is just a number. On this side of the equation, we have k1, but then we're multiplying this term by 0 and by 0. So we get the value of k1. Do the same thing to find k2 and k3. And in general, k sub i is multiplying f of s by s minus p sub i and then letting s equal p sub i. Let's do another example. Suppose you have a waveform whose transform is f of s equal to 2 times s plus 3 divided by s, s plus 1, and s plus 2. The highest power of s in the numerator is just 1, and in the denominator is equal to 3. So we do have n greater than m, and so we can use our property of the partial fraction expansion. Taking our three denominator terms, s, s plus 1, and s plus 2, there exists a k1, k2, and k3. To find k1, we're going to multiply f of s times s, and then let s equal 0. But again, these terms cancel, and then I have 2 times 0 plus 3 divided by 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2. That turns out to be 6 over 2, or 3. Find k2 the same way, multiply our function by s plus 1, the s plus 1 terms cancel, and then let s equal minus 1. So I have 2 times minus 1 plus 3 over minus 1, and then minus 1 plus 2. That turned out to be 4 over minus 1, or minus 4. Likewise, to find k3, we'll multiply the function f of s by s plus 2, and we'll let s equal minus 2. So again, we have a cancellation of terms, and then we have 2 times minus 2 plus 3 over minus 2, minus 2 plus 1. That turns out to be 2 over 2, or 1. We can now find f of s, then, as 3 over s, minus 4 over s plus 1, plus 1 over s plus 2. Now we can go look at our table on page 13, and then do the inverse transform. So this corresponds to a step function multiplied by 3, this is a decaying exponential with e to the minus t multiplied by minus 4. And then lastly, this term is equal to e to the minus 2t multiplied by 1. Now all these are multiplied by u of t, but we're looking at functions where t greater than 0, so you can just drop the u of t term. So we just have 3 minus 4 e to the minus t plus 2 e to the minus 2t for t greater than 0. Let me show you one more thing here. Let's take our function we just found, f of s, as 3 over s minus 4 over s plus 1 plus 1 over s plus 2. And let's show that it actually is equal to the function we started with. And let's find a common denominator. So multiplying these three terms would be our denominator. So I'll multiply this term here, the 3, times these two terms, s plus 1 times s plus 2. I'll multiply the minus 4 times s and then s plus 2. And then I'll multiply 1 here by s and then s plus 1. And multiplying this out, I've got s squared times 3. I have the inner product, which is s plus 2s, then times 3, which is equal to 3 times 3 are 9. And then I've got 2 times 1 is 2, and then times 3 is equal to 6. This term is minus 4s squared. 
and then I've got minus 4s times 2, or minus 8s, and then lastly I've got s squared plus s. We've got some terms canceling here. I've got 3s squared minus 4s squared plus s squared, so these cancel. And then I have 9s minus 8s plus s, that's just equal to 2s, and then remaining I've got a plus 6. I can pull out a 2 here, and I've got an s plus 3 divided by s, s plus 1 plus plus 2, and that's the equation we started with. So this technique is allowing us to take this ratio of polynomials and s and express it as a summation of terms. And these are some of the techniques for finding an inverse Laplace transform.